Anti groupthink flies totally in the face of our favorite libertarian and conservative ideals of freedom, individual autonomy, incentive, and personal responsibility. However, it is very important to note in any critique of feminism that according to the left, the protections of anti sexism do not apply to women on the right. <clears throat> The reason this rank hypocrisy must be highlighted again and again is because it rips a giant hole right through the middle of feminist dogma. It reveals that modern feminism is no longer about women's equality, nor is it about female solidarity empowering each other against all odds. This vicious, no questions asked, take no prisoners Sorry. animosity of feminists towards conservative women points squarely to the fact that rather than a battle of oppressed versus oppressor, it has become a war of left versus right. Feminists have become nothing more than cultural Marxists looking to push their hat mentality agenda by whatever means necessary, even if it means engaging in the behavior they claim to hate in order to shut their opposition the hell up. Now, while right-wing women don't tend to care too much about this, if it I ever went to school with this girl, I think I would have married. Daunting. It's not a secret that the but only thing feminists idea. hate more than men is the young conservative woman. Our very existence undermines the core narrative of their ideology, and that is that all women are oppressed by men. And as third wave so feminists tend to possess a kind of intellectual laziness, the debating mind women of on the right with facts will never be their preferred method of retaliation. This indicates either extraordinary ignorance or a lack of confidence in their own ideology. And my God, does that ever show when you take them on about something as baseless as the gender pay gap? Now, to mask this intellectual weakness, feminists have no problem attempting to humiliate their female opposition into submission using the same commentary they would denounce as the worst kind of misogyny if uttered by a man to one of their own. The three best, most recent examples of this are Kellyanne Conway, who, as the first woman ever to lead a successful U.S. election campaign, should be a feminist icon, but for the fact she has the wrong politics. Melania Trump, who isn't even a political figure, but is married to the wrong man and looks fabulous in a swimsuit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and me. But we will get you to like how later. she put that right after so Melania Trump feminists, looks? Yeah, conservative I women that. aren't actual women. That's all right, they yeah, are deficient in some way, having either capitulated to the patriarchal dominion of men to serve their own interests, or are too dumb to think for themselves. That, or they're just attention-seeking. She I seems like an aristocrat woman from a hundred years ago. The prominent Australian feminist journalists tried to spin when I emerged onto the public scene was that I was a ditzy opportunist who had hoard her way into the good graces of powerful conservative men in order to benefit financially. Especially since I actually used to write for an online women's lifestyle magazine. It was all too easy for the Aussie feminazi hordes to insist I had done an ideological flip purely to make more money and to gain notoriety. Little did they know that actually, the most money I ever made as a journalist was writing for that women's magazine, primarily about celebrity gossip, lipstick, and sex, not politics. However, it would have been incomprehensible for them to accept that a right-wing woman had been left to her own devices to formulate her own opinions. And I'm fairly sure they still believe I am being coerced in some way or another. But what feminists don't seem to realize is that nowadays, being conservative, or at least publicly stating the fact you're not, you're not a feminist, epitomizes a woman thinking for herself. Of boldly going against the grain and risking enormous backlash in the process. See, over the last few years, feminism has gone mainstream. Try as they might to deny it, being a feminist is no longer some niche symbol of resistance. It is an expected trope of female identity politics and an increasingly boring one at that. Calling yourself a feminist is by far the safest option, both in the public and private realms. You won't be questioned on it, and if you're antagonized, the noisy left will leap to your defense. Feminism is the official doctrine of acceptable thought, 
and there is no longer anything original, interesting, or controversial about adopting its principles. As such, it is now conservative women who are rocking the boat in terms of what a, wo a woman should and shouldn't think, do, or say, which is the very, very worst possible thing that could have happened to feminism. Staging slut walks and screeching fight the patriarchy is now about as edgy and countercultural as pink fairy floss. <laughs> if you're a woman and you really want to freak people out, broadcast publicly that you think society could benefit from a return to traditional gender roles. <laughs> Because women instinctively prioritize the nurturing of children, which is not untrue. Or that fat positive Instagram bloggers are appallingly irresponsible and should have their accounts suspended as a danger to public health. <laughs> or even, and this is horribly <sighs> controversial even for me. What am I going to make In this order video for long term about? happiness, women should focus primarily on securing a man before they're 30 rather than climbing the career ladder oh, because a woman's sexual market value deteriorates with How should I post this video? I'm, I'm wondering. <laughs> that would, yeah, look at her, yeah. That would get some, yeah. Now this kind of provocative right-wing eschewing of identity politics is what makes heads explode, not whinging about mansplaining and sexist air conditioning. <laughs> That's a thing. You should YouTube that. <laughs> now, deep down, feminist leaders know this. They have to. Women in the Western world have, by law, it. every Greatest opportunity available to men. We that benefit from a cultural disdain for and a court system that punishes rape, sexual harassment, wage disparity, gender discrimination, and other atrocities. However, we have been unable to enjoy it because a bunch of self-absorbed, middle-class malcontents are running around telling us how terrible we should think our lives are. It's very irritating. Feminists have quite literally run out of things to complain about, which in the fight for women's equality would seem a good thing, you would have thought. You would have. But rather than celebrating but victory and reaping the rewards, Feminists keep inventing new things to whine about. If they didn't, not only would they be facing a purposeless existence, they would go out of business. Modern feminism is, amongst other things, a money-making exercise. And chillingly, the only way to profit is to make other women feel really, really terrible about themselves. Feminists do this by telling outright lies, like insisting that even though it has been illegal uh, for decades to pay women less than men for the same work, somehow speech. women will be gypped of equal pay across the board for the rest of their lives yeah. because of some misrepresented, non-existent gender pay gap. Uh, I really want to... Now, this generates a sense of hopelessness and causes women to flock to feminist chiefs as seemingly their only source the of comfort. Given by woman. Now, the two most effective means of achieving this are by promoting the concept of victimhood while uniting women against a common enemy, the straight white man. This absolves women of any responsibility for anything wrong with their lives and strangles them with the mantle of mediocrity. They end up trapped in a sort of banal limbo with only one apparent option for salvation, feminism. Once feminist leaders have roped in these anxious, ugly ducklings. <laughs> no, I don't, didn't I, I don't mean literally ugly, I mean like insecure. <laughs> <laughs> they, she has she's proper, like an English woman, but like, God, like God bless her soul. The scale, type. Which is usually based on skin color. So the darker their complexion, the higher they rank, and the more victim points they score. Now, these victim points are doled out according to the rules of intersectionality, which is a form of feminism that involves finding multiple things other than gender to blame for how horrible your life is. All women get at least one point for being women, except for conservative women who can go and die. The greatest speech ever However, given by a woman. 
If you are a white you woman, you get less points than if you're black. If you're Muslim, you get even more points than that. But if you're Christian, you score much lower, even if you're female and black. So if you're a female, black, trans, Muslim midget with epilepsy, you can pretty much rule the leftist universe if you want to. After their place on the victimology scale is determined, these insecure women are drilled with the idea that the only way for women to be free-thinking, happy human beings is to bust through the bounds of a weird, invisible, malevolent force called the patriarchy, taking out as many innocent male bystanders as they can in the process, of course. Of course. When you lay out third-wave feminism like this, it all sounds a bit ridiculous. To be drawn into that sinkhole is to be a very foolish human being. I, seriously, I think I'm in love. <clears throat> it's no wonder then that this cesspool of self-deprecation and rampant unhappiness doesn't appeal to confident, self-satisfied women who are happy to stand on their own two feet. And as such, confident women, therefore, tend to gravitate towards libertarianism and conservatism. This is because... Aside from the fact that according to a 2014 study in the Journal of Public Economics, we tend to be hotter than left-wing women. Oh. Oh, this is true. You can actually Google right, that. It's wow, very interesting. Damn right. Yeah. More interesting, We find the responsibility that exactly. comes with liberty to be very appealing. Our modus operandi is centered on individualism, not collectivism. And unlike collectivism's promise of having the pact to fall back on when things get tough, the isolation of individualism involves a certain degree of risk, which allows libertarian and conservative-minded women to thrive. Yeah, right. We won't allow ourselves to be controlled by the mob, which renders us not only useless to feminists, but a grave danger that must be eradicated. Yeah, Ben Spiros, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know why the heck that comes up. All right, you know, um, one thing I must say, like, that's the insanity of, like, you know, women's rights. You know, when she brings up, you know, we have more rights and we have the greatest blah, blah, blah out of any country for women. And there's this nagging. And, you know, they prove that it's like 5% of the population, or 5% of the woman population, anywhere in this, you know, many different studies. But if you want to go from far low to far high, it's 3 to 7% of the population of women were feminists. And, you know, the crazy thing is, it's just like, most women look at them and like, are you joking me? And the worst part is these little fairy boys that have been raised, I guess because they've been raised by their mothers and there wasn't a father around. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't, I haven't had a father since I was two and I still realized what a man was supposed to be. I went out and found those man figures, those father figures to look up to to spies to whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess I'm kind of going off on a rant here, aren't I? Let's get back to what I was really trying to say. I apologize. Um, no, the funniest thing, you know, about these feminist freaking women that just flip out about everything is they're such a small number and they think that they're going to bring this rally call of women just to... And it's like, no, you're not, because you gotta realize, like, men, yes, I will kill somebody, or I will go kill something to feed you, or kill somebody to protect you. I can lift heavy objects, I can build structure. Yes, I am men. That doesn't make me better than a woman. What that makes me is having the parts, the ability, and the mind structure to build and make something and build society for my woman. Now, as a woman, what you have over us, and this is insanity. That's why 
this has gone way too far with, oh, women's rights and da da da. Fuck you. You got more than enough rights. You want to take our kids, you'll take our kids. You want to take half of our funds and freaking divorce us, you'll do it. The thing is, a woman is. She's like a fucking magician. She's magical. She literally can make life. Which, you know, that seed comes from us and incubates that egg. But, whatever. Um, but the thing is, like, y women are like these beautiful magicians of life and love and just everything. And that's why they're supposed to be worshipped and put on a pedestal. That's why a woman isn't supposed to be in freaking combat in the military. Women can move up through the military just as easily as men and never have to go into combat. Why is a woman, and I've had this discussion with college girls, my neighbors, da da da, is whatever. I've had this discussion, and they were so offended that my feeling is that a woman should never be called up to draft to have to go fight in the infantry. If they have to be called up to be drafted to be a nurse or be anything else that isn't on the front lines. They literally, I swear if they had fucking knives, it would cut my throat. They were so offended. And I asked them, like, do you even know the statistics of what it is? What are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, did you know that from the women that have gone and done the Navy SEAL stuff and the women that have gone into combat, and there is, I, I forget her name and I don't have it, I... I don't have it and whatever. But this woman came out and, you know, it was another woman interviewing her, blah, 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 news. Like, blah, 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 what do you think about this? And she was like, for me going and doing it myself, she's like, I lost 20% of my bone mass going and trying to do what the men did and doing it. She did. God bless her soul. Beautiful, awesome, great Marine. Um, She was like, but I lost the ability to have kids. So think about this. Sitting in a foxhole that's filled up with water for a day or two, three days? What what if you had to do that? What would that do to you? So we're talking about you lose 20% of your bone mass. And guess what? You guys have less bone mass than what, men. Not to talk shit. You lose that and then you lose the ability to have kids. Fuck that. Excuse me. I actually have a more appreciation and love for you as a woman and for my species that I don't want you to do that. I don't care if you're not my woman. I don't want you to fight for me. I will fight for you. And you have these libtard idiot kids that have come from these freaking Zionist ruled freaking moron college professors. And they don't even know that they're run by them. It doesn't matter. Whatever. If you have any idea, you know what I'm talking about. But you have these girls, like, so offended by it, and it's like, you're sitting here running around, going, getting drunk high, doing whatever drugs, and running around having all the fun that you want. Because what I'm saying that you shouldn't have to do, if you had to do that, and we're at war, you would be hating your life. And these kids are so oblivious to what life could be being at war, that they're sitting there offended when you tell them, I wouldn't want you to have to be drafted and go off to war and be in the front lines and have this and go through all this, lose your, you know, 20% of your bone mass, your da-da-da, this, that, and, you know, most likely have about a 60 to 70% chance of coming out of the military being sterile because of what you put your body through. And they were offended that... I didn't want that for them. That is the insanity that has been taught in our colleges. It is insane. All right, well, obviously I am too. We're coming up on 20 minutes. Um, more than anything, like, I don't get that. Women are magicians that make and cradle life. They're the greatest gift I think God gave man. Why won't they take that? 
I know not. I love you all. God bless. Never forget, you are the resistance.